If I were uh, Groucho Marx, the minute you said Pete Buttigieg, I think a little duck would have dropped down with his name because that's that's basically the secret word around here. We rarely get far in a You Can't Beat Blue interview without bringing up the subject of Secretary of Transportation Pete Buttigieg, but in your case, there's a real connection. He endorsed you for your run in 2020. Um, I'm curious Before about- Before he was Secretary of Transportation. Oh, yes. I just want to be very clear because the Secretary of Transportation, that would not be uh, right, but it was before- Right before that ever happened, before President Biden was even elected. Just want to be clear. <laughs> Thank you for that distinction. I do appreciate that. And I have uh, fallen on the wrong side of that before. So it's it's an important thing to note. Uh, the endorsement, did that come, you were both mayors. Did, did you connect originally through being mayors together? How did you initially uh, uh, meet him? I had seen him at the US Conference of Mayors. Um, I, I don't know that, I got in later to the, to, I became a mayor later than he did. So as I was getting more involved, he was actually uh, starting to run for president. And um, I just thought he's incredibly smart. He was the mayor that other mayors wanted to, were listening to, wanted to hear his opinions on. And um, I was very proud to support him and his campaign. I think what I loved most about his campaign was it was like a group of happy warriors who saw the how this country could be a, a beautiful place, could continue to improve. And um, people who just wanted to make things better. And they felt he was a great messenger, whether they always agreed with his policies or not, the way that he is able to talk about issues that doesn't divide, but brings people in and brings people together and gives people space to take the time to kind of process the issue and have an opportunity to, to join the fold at a later time. And I think that's really important as we become very divisive on social media, in the news. There is so much more that unites us. If you talk to most people about the things they want, they want to be safe, they want to be healthy, they want to be happy, they want to have um, work that they can afford to live. These are all things that are just very human values. And to see us disagreeing all the time about so many things and never really talking about the things that we all do agree on, I think is very hard to watch for any extended period of time. So Pete was just like a great messenger. And of course, any room he's in, he's the smartest guy in the room, whether he wants to admit it or not. And it's really great to see how far he's come now and the work he's doing. And he continues to still have that, that local mayor's uh, perspective on things, going out, not just passing um, an infrastructure bill, but really going out into the communities and highlighting the difference that will be made in those communities from this policy. Because in the end, policy is personal. It affects our everyday lives. And um, I think it's important as elected officials or as appointed officials uh, to make sure that we never forget who we work for and the reason that we're here. Yes, agreed. Um, you went to Iowa for Pete, didn't you? For the did. what was, that must have been a blast, was it? It was a blast. I had never been to Iowa before, and I think I went to Iowa about four times. And um, it was originally, you know, I did the door to door. There was actually a group of us from Florida who went for the caucus. We went to, for the week leading up to the caucus. We went door to door asking people to vote for Pete. We talked to volunteers. We got um, caucus cards signed and we, I attended the caucus in Ankeny, Iowa, actually. And it was a great process to watch, um, to see people not only cast a vote, but actually have to stand up for their vote and moved in a direction. And then you would see people that that were behind campaigns that weren't viable and then they had to move to another uh, person. It was uh, great to watch. It was very, I don't know, it felt very historic. <laughs> I'm not sure if that was the last Iowa caucus we'll ever see. Um, I understand the problems with the caucuses. It's a specific time. And if you can't make it at that time, you're kind of, you're not allowed, you're not able to you know, have a voice in the process. But it was a very interesting process to see something I'd never seen before. And it was great because Pete ended up winning. And to be there that night and to kind of see 
that his message uh, resonated and not only his message, but how he communicated resonated with people, I think was very empowering and uplifting for all of us who were there.